<clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 460 and the topic today is, is a new relationship your best choice? And I'm going to put a framing around that and explain it in more detail. But before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and why this may sound a bit counterintuitive. <laughs> My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and yes, relationship attraction expert, which is why it's going to be counterintuitive, but I get to that. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do is talk on do these Facebook Live talks that end up on YouTube and also on my podcast, in case you're listening or watching there, the other way around. And the topics I talk about are around relationship, romance, and love. And these are actually called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 460. So there's lots to talk about. And the topic today, as I mentioned, is, um, is a new relationship your best choice? And I want to break this down in a certain environment because this was inspired by a, a long um, dialogue on a post I did a couple of days ago that's still going and what hit me was this point about why people choose relationship and why maybe you might not want to choose one right this moment in time because according to some people not me <laughs> and again I'm a relationship attraction expert doesn't mean I should say everybody should attract a relationship which is why I'm saying this counterintuitive piece there's a mindset that certain people carry and it's a variety of people that carry this belief that it's better to be in a relationship than being single, which I have a slight disagreement with, just to be transparent. Because there are many choices in relationship that actually suck. And so being single is actually a healthy way of being. But I'll break that down further in a moment. At the same time, there are people who are under the belief that the only way to... Um, get over a past breakup, a painful breakup, an upset relationship, whatever that is, is to get into another relationship, which again, I absolutely disagree with. And I'll explain both of those in more detail as we go along. So there's a framework, or that's not the right word, there's, there's an understanding, that's not right either. There's a belief, <laughs> this is more accurate, about relationships that it's the be all and end all of life. That you don't, you're not, you're not valid. You don't, you're not successful. You're not whole unless you're in a relationship. Now, I got to be careful. I got, I got about seventeen things showing up to jump into, but I'm going to hold off on it for a second. Um, but let me do the other one first. I think I'm just feeling which is more lined up. Okay, so the paradigm that the only way to get over a past relationship is to get into a new relationship. I absolutely disagree with, as I mentioned. And here's why. If you've gone through a tumultuous, painful, upsetting breakup, heartbreaking, abusive, upsetting relationship, your next partner isn't your therapist. And you don't want to make them that. So do them a favor and yourself that if you come out of a bad breakup, a painful relationship ending that you're traumatized by, you're wounded by emotionally, mentally, even physically, that you've been hurt by that ex-partner, do yourself the favor, first of all, of taking time to let the wounds heal, but secondly, taking action with somebody who's not your relationship partner to heal those wounds. This may sound counterintuitive, it may sound say counterintuitive to some of you, but the reality is very clear that my experience of working with clients is that when you get another relationship, and I've had to experience myself looking back at my past history, that I would use my next relationship to cover up the wounds from the past relationship. Of course, you've never done that yourself. The framework of that is the assumption that by using that next person as your um, <laughs> ointment, <laughs> as your, as your um, band-aid for your past relationship, is a vastly um, ineffective way of doing things. Because to be in a healthy relationship, you have to be healthy. And that mind blower, like, duh, of course. You want to be in a healthy relationship? You need to be healthy. If you haven't done the work to heal your past baggage, upsets, heartbreaks, woundings, pain from past relationships, you're not healthy. And, and I mean this clearly. 
it's like you can't go out and throw a ball if you've broken your arm. But yet we still try to do the same thing in relationship. We still think that we can just get another relationship and we'll be fine. We'll get over the past. We'll forget the past relationship and we'll be fine with this new one. Not so fast. Yes, you may be able to ignore the past pain and suffering, ignore being the word, in the new relationship. Because the new person makes you feel so good and you're so loved and you're so connection, so passionate, so sexually fulfilled and all these different things. However, as time goes by, either of two things will happen. Those past wounds will resurface. Like if you don't clean the bandages on the dressing, the wound's going to fester. That's kind of what happens emotionally and energetically when you have a bad relationship breakup, you don't resolve. It doesn't go away, it just gets more painful. But it suppresses for a while. It, goes, it, sublim it um, sublimates for a while. And the new relationship can suppress it. But as time goes by, the other part is that, person's, that person and you have to work harder and harder to maintain that new relationship to ignore the, the loudness of the voice inside of the pain and hurt from the past relationship. Do you really want to bring that to your next relationship? So again, past breakup, that's wounded, painful, upsetting, hurt, hurts and is troubling, is best dealt with outside of a relationship before you jump into a new one. You want to be healthy going into a relationship, not use your relationship to work out your stuff. Because again, your new relationship partner is not your therapist. It may be free, but it's worth investing with a coach or a counselor or a therapist before you get there so you don't make your partner your therapist because, therapist because truth be told, you're going to reject them. You'll lose them. You'll end up ruining the relationship if you do that. So don't do that. Second piece. There are, um, I'm going to say this the way I said it at the beginning. There's a framework or there's a belief system. There's a rule out there somewhere in the, in the ethers that somehow that you're more successful and you're a better person if you're in a relationship than if you're single. And yes, I am a, as I said, I'm a relationship attraction expert, but I'm not a fan of people saying you should be in a relationship over being single. Because a lot of people go into a relationship to avoid being single because they're not willing to face themselves. Error in approach. As you can tell by these, these different things I'm talking about, there's a lot, of, a lot of errors in approach that people make, and I want to make sure you get these points because one of these, I'm sure, if not more, you can relate to. I know I can, <laughs> from my own history. Being single is actually one of the best places to be preparing for a relationship. It's better to prepare before you get in a relationship than when you're in one. It's like, you might want to just pre like prepare for your, you want to pack for your trip rather than pack after you left. Does that make sense? So if that preparation could be several months after your last breakup, it could be a couple of years. If you're someone like myself, who's an entrepreneur, who's, a, who's really driving focus to build your business and build your life in the world and to actually step into your mission, your vision, your purpose, whatever that is, whether it is a career or maybe it's you're changing some things about your own life, it's easier to do that when you're not invested in another relationship. There's one caveat I'll get to in a minute, second, or one exception for that. For most of us, we go into a relationship and tend to be static where we are. We don't necessarily transform or change, and we end up being in the place where our dreams go to the wayside because our relationship takes takes, uh, becomes front and center and takes priority. And that isn't a healthy way to approach your life because you end up becoming, you end up shelving your dreams and then actually putting your life on hold for the relationship which means you're going to end up resenting your partner. It may take six months, six years, 60 years, but you'll still be resenting them somewhere along the line because you'll blame them, which is inappropriate as well, for somehow negating your dreams and your vision because you didn't get to live them. Now, the one exception I mentioned is if you consciously choose partnership where you both intentionally choose to support each other's dreams and your own dreams. And this one's a rare one, to be blunt. It's, it's a possibility but it takes a very high level of conscious conversation before you start and has to be really willing to go in both um, both individuals fully embracing in that relationship to support each other and their own dreams. It's possible, but 90% of the people who are in a relationship out there have no clue about this and don't do this. If anything, they will say, no, you can't do that, you need to stay with me. And they become a manipulative, um, codependent um, jailkeeper, jail, um, is that what I'm looking for? Prison guard, jail keep, something like that. <laughs> Jailer, that's the word. Because what's happening is they're going to basically hold you hostage against your dreams because they want you to stay the same. That's another pitfall of relationships, by the way. Attempting to stay the same in a relationship is almost impossible. Almost. You can do it, but it's a lot of work. So to have you... To be someone who's being suppressed by a partner, say, stay where you are, don't change, don't evolve, don't grow, because I want you to stay the same, 
is like trying to push water uphill. It's pretty much impossible. Now, the paradigm of being single is no better or worse than being in a relationship. I want to make that very clear. One of my one of my rules or one of my statements, there's nothing better or worse than being single or being in a relationship. Yes, there can be experiences and environments where being a couple being a couple versus being single is more preferable, but it doesn't make it better or worse. There are some places where being single is more preferable. Like getting a ski lift. Single, much easier than if you're a couple. <laughs> so that one just came out of left field. But this is the point, is that relationships should be a conscious, intentional choice not a reaction to what happened before and if you feel afraid of being single is the best time to be single and find out why and there are many of people out there i know who are so sh- i'll say i'll say it so shit scared of being single they'd rather be in a relationship that sucks than be alone now the logic of that defies me but i understand why but i would never see a point of being in a relationship to avoid being single to be really clear the only way to be in a very healthy relationship is to be very healthy when you're single. When you can love yourself as you are, being single, being individual, being an independent person, is the only, yes, the only time we can be in a whole, healthy, constructive, interdependent, clean relationship. I think that was clear. The temptation to think you get in a relationship but then you'll get better, it, it's, it's the wrong approach absolutely the wrong approach and it will definitely um, bite you in the butt <laughs> if you don't do this work yes there are, there are many ways of just getting to relationships convenient comfortable great sex but nothing else I've been there myself but it becomes all for, becomes very unfulfilling as time goes by and the more awake you are the quicker it becomes unfulfilling it really is a choice if you want to have a relationship that grows and you thrive in or you want to just simply get into one to avoid being single. So this conversation has a lot more spokes to it. I'm just giving you some of the highlights because, again, this was inspired from a, a, um, com- a dialogue on a post that I put up a few days ago that's gotten a lot of interest. A lot of people loving it, liking it, sharing it out, and also some people in there who didn't like what I was saying didn't agree with the article author, and I understand where they're coming from, but we had to sort of get to the bottom line, and I got really clear that some people look at relationships one way and I don't. <laughs> I look at it a different way. And so my message, my intention, my um, encouragement to you, if you are single, is don't go rushing into a relationship because you've been single for a week, a year, uh, 10 years. Get clear about what you want in a relationship. Get clear about what's valid in, for your relationship. And also, what is it you're going to know you're going to give up because you're single now? If, you've, if you aren't comfortable being single, that's got to come first. Being comfortable in your body, being comfortable in your life, being comfortable in who you are makes you a better candidate for a healthy relationship. But don't give it lip service. Really learn how to love yourself. I have to have something for that and I'll mention that in a minute. But it really comes back to when you do love yourself more, you can actually love somebody else better as well. So your self-love practice, your self-support practice, and as you just so love and support somebody else. It's so easy to say, well, when I want to get in a relationship, I'll be loving them fully, be perfect. It's like, the reality is you're going to limit what you can do, sorry, you limit what you can give by how much you can do that for yourself. So self-love makes you a better lover, yes. Self-support makes you a better supporter. And self-confidence makes you more confident in giving confidence to other people and, in, and encouraging other people. If you want a healthy relationship, these are all prerequisites. So you've got to do the work if you want a healthy relationship. No, you don't have to do the work. But if you want a good relationship, I recommend you do the work. It's a lot easier to get what you want. It's a lot more aligned to where you want to go. And it's a much easier journey when you don't have to stress and worry and make, try and make it perfect once you're in that relationship. Because if you can't relax in the relationship and be yourself and living fully, wholly, expressing your beauty, your majesty, and your magnificence, why bother? That's why I'm a firm believer that being single is no better or no worse than being in a relationship. Sometimes that is better for the purpose of focusing on yourself and learning how to be a better person, a better individual, a better human. So then when you go into a relationship, you're already connected to that piece. I hope this is making sense. This is, this is, a, tra- this is a paradigm shift for, for a lot of people, a paradigm transformation for a lot of people because it's such a big piece to say this to people. Like, oh, just be in a relationship, you're fine. This is where I disagree. Truly... Um, amazing relationship 
come from two individuals who are whole, complete as they are, they come together. Okay, sorry, my, my, my phone just said low connection. The phone hasn't moved and the, the Wi-Fi is right next to me, so I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, I hope it's still coming through and clear. You can see my broadcast. I'll find it in the replay. Um, so, a couple of quick things. As I mentioned, self-love is a guarantee um, tool to make you a better lover in relationship. And I happen to have a program, so it's a, a product for that, called a self-love practice. So I'll put the links in the comments below, but I'll give them to you verbally so you can you can go straight away if you're looking for, look into them. Which is my website is barryselby.com, by the way. Or at least it refers from my name, which is barryselby.com. So if you go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love, you can check out the self-love practice and get it if you want to get started. If you're single, definitely recommend it. If you're in a relationship, you can use it as well. It will up level the quality of relationship you already have, which isn't a bad thing. If you're still dealing with that trauma, pain, upset, hurt feelings from the past relationship, and you really don't want to go into another relationship because you're smart enough to say, I don't want to do that again, that's when I invite you to have a chat with me. In fact, it's barryselby.com forward slash chat. How convenient. Which is actually a 30 minute discovery session, a conversation between you and me, where I can give you some guidance, get see where you're going, and give you some steps to take. And if it lines up to work together, I can talk about that. That's really what it's about for me, is make sure you're in the right place to love yourself and attract an amazing relationship. Ladies especially, you're my, you're my audience, my clients. And the, the key, and I said this in the broadcast yesterday, I think, is that you have the power to attract what you want. Don't go hunting. Ladies, if you go out in the dating environments, the dating apps, the dating sites, it's gonna put you in a hunting mode. And that's gonna basically take the masculine away from the men. So don't do that. Learn how to attract what you really want. I have got a program for that as well, of course. <laughs> I'll tell you about that if you wanna get, when you reach out to me. So again, self-love, sign up for a chat, get the help you need, own your single life the way it's meant to be, get clear about your vision, direction, and focus, and your purpose, and then when a relationship fits that, jump in with both feet. I hope this made sense to you. Um, I appreciate you being with me as always. Again, this is a Facebook Live that goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast, so let you know where to find those. Um, on my business page on Facebook is where I archive all these broadcasts, so if you're watching afterwards. Thank you, Gina, I appreciate that. Um, I hope these are great ideas, so thank you for the feedback. Um, uh, I save these onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and then I also put, repurpose these onto YouTube later on. And my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, and the playlist for these is Messages from the Masculine. That's also the title of my podcast on iTunes, again, Messages from the Masculine. You can search it under iTunes, and then you can subscri subscribe and download my broad audios there. The audio format on my iTunes library in my podcast, the videos on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, homework. I haven't given homework for a while. It's time to give some homework out. Right. So, if you are single, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, of course they are. Thank you. Um, Homework assignment. What I want to give you is homework. If you're in a relationship, oh, that'd be da um, I'm thinking this, this would be a dangerous one to give. Okay, I'm going to give it to you anyway. If you're in a relationship, here's your, here's your uh, homework, if you choose to accept it, your mission if you choose to accept it, is if you have a dream or vision or intention that you have not claimed yet, that's in your heart, that's been driving you for a long time, but you haven't opened up to it, Take some steps towards actualizing it, which includes talking to your partner about it. Because this is going to test the metal of your relationship. If your partner listens to you and gives you suggestions, or is on board, or says, I love this idea, how can I support you? You're in the right relationship. If they go, I haven't got time for that, sorry, I can't deal with it. No, no, you don't want to do that, it's not important. You may want to think about choosing a different partner because you want to be supporting your dreams and visions. That's one. If you're single, yeah, I know, I'm starting to stir the pot with this one. If you're single, same question, or same piece, except you don't have to ask a partner for this. If you have a dream, a vision, or intention you haven't lived yet, it may be time to put something into action. Maybe you want to write it down for the first time. Maybe you want to write out some ideas or some small steps you can take towards having that happen. And maybe you want to reach out to somebody who can give you some guidance. I, have help. I can help in that area, by the way, too. That's one of the things I've worked on myself. It's time to live your mission purpose in the world, whether you're single or in a relationship. Again, it's no different. It's time to live your truth. And we need more of that on the planet now than ever before. So that's your homework. You accept it if you choose. Not, my, not in my control, it's up to you. 
So with that, I want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for being on my broadcast. If you want to share it with your friends, please do so. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below, and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, I appreciate you being with me, as always. These are broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week, unless something changes, which I'll let you know. Um, feel free to tune in. Make sure you click. There's a notify somewhere on this on this page or on the screen when it's in play, when it's in live. I think in the replay as well. You click on that to be notified next time I go live, so that you'll be notified every time I go live, which again is around 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'm back in tomorrow with number 461. Um, topics to be decided. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye.